Today I will dissect for you one of the most famous, if not the most famous ever, bass lines of all times, the one of Come Together. So get ready to listen to this incredible McCartney masterpiece in a totally brand new way. You know that I always wanted to give you new perspectives of, uh, about how the Beatles played their music. As it often happens with the Beatles, the way we think they play the part is very rarely the way they really play the part. A few little and almost undetectable details makes a huge difference in sounding like the original recording or not. In the following video I will explain to you everything about how I recreated the sound. One, two, three, four. So which pickups I used, uh, how I set up the bass. Um, also, you know that I always use pyramid strings made in German strings for my Beatles recreation sounds. One, two. But this time we will have to use the same strings that Paul used in the Abbey Road album on this song Come Together. So we'll, we'll have to choose a different brand of strings, different type of strings. Anyway, in this next video I will explain everything about how I created the sound so you can get the closest possible to the original Come Together recording. Let's dive directly into the matter and let's start by focusing on which notes Paul played on the fretboard and how he played them. First, a very quick suggestion. I suggest that you use a very light touch in playing the bass, just uh, as Paul did in almost every of the Beatles recordings. So don't push hard. Let's analyze how Paul really plays the part. We see everybody playing the part the same way, starting with the index on the D and then hammering on the pinky somewhere on the frets and sliding the pinky to the 12th fret on the A. But this is not how Paul plays on the record. By slowing down the part a lot, you can clearly hear the slide proceeding chromatically, both upward and downward. You choose which finger to use. I use a pinky, you can use the a ring finger as well. And you start by plucking on the G and reaching the 12th fret with the pinky. You start with the pinky, you end up with the pinky, then you go down on the F on the G string, you put the pinky on the D string on the D at the 12th fret and you slide down with the pinky. When you are back here on the G, which you can hear on the original recording, you are ready to start again on the D, just like a loop, this way. It sounds like a regular. The second thing is how Paul plays the slide, the uh, cadence he gives to the slide. While everybody is playing this part with a long slide, It's because they are distracted by what the guitars are playing in the background, which is this. In fact, if you ask any bass player, can you remind how the bass line of Come Together goes? They probably think about it for a few seconds and then say, yes, it goes. Now, what Paul plays instead is a very fast slide. He remains a little bit on the D and then makes a fast slide for the whole song. Incredible. Check it out. It sounds like this. So, not boom, 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 but boom, 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 boom. When he goes back from the D to the G here. He stays just a few milliseconds more on the D and then he slides down till the G's, like this. Not, but, like this. Another thing that, uh, uh, me too, I completely missed and if I didn't break down the part for you for this video, I never discovered that, is that there is a hidden D minor chord into the part that Paul plays in the bass. It's curious, but it's there. 
uh, let me show how it uh, it happens Paul starts a slide on the D uh, here on the on the A string and then when he gets to the A and is going to play the F here on the G string he slightly caresses the D and A string the result is that you hear the uh, F ringing very in front but in the background there are the A and the D string ringing like this Can you hear the D and A string ringing? This contributes to give the part the sense of the dramatic connotation that it has uh, to it that perfectly fits the two words that you surely know John is singing, these dramatic words that John is singing. This kind of fits, the, perfectly fits the, the chorus of the lyrics. When we get to the verse, the bass line is played in the same exact way, except for one single detail that is always disregarded as well. I want to offer this one for you for the first time. When Paul plays the verse, he adds a hammer on, on the D, on the D string. So he changes the line a little bit, like this. There is a hammer on here before it slides down to the G. You play the first slide exactly like before, from the D to the uh, A, then you play the F here on the G string, and then you play a hammer on on the D at the 12th fret and then you pluck the string and go down again till the G. When Paul reaches a part that goes into the down below his knee, he goes here on the, uh, the A on the fifth uh, fret of the low E string and then he goes up here, okay, on the 10th fret of the D string, then on the 12th fret of the A string and goes down. So, make a pause. So, twice with a very short uh, sustain. And then go up here. Again, a little silence and then stay a little while on the A and go down the fact that Paul moves up on the fretboard to play the part is another very nice lesson that we have from the Beatles and from the old school bass, bass players uh, in general is that uh, if you want to uh, have a consistency in the bass sound don't move up to the higher strings because they deliver a thinner sound which is in fact what Paul does instead of playing the C here on the G uh, string he moves up and plays the C here where the sound is, is fatter compared to this one which is thinner the part that Paul plays in the chorus goes like this you start with the second fret on the A string on the B then 5th fret on the uh, low E string, so A and then G, 3rd fret on the low E string. You can also play starting by the um, B here. On this type of strings, nylon strings, doesn't make a huge difference between here and here. Last but not least, the most common mistake in uh, playing the part is uh, hitting the D three times. Like this. Paul only plays the D two times. And then starts the slide. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave me your comments below, let me know what you think about the content and uh, subscribe if you want to the channel for the next video which will be about how I created the sound the closest possible to the original recording. Ciao, see you next time.